Hi guys, my name's Alana and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. On this channel, I post mental health content, I post videos every week, um, and I also do vlogs and just a few lifestyle videos. So if you like that type of content, please subscribe. For today's video, I'm going to be talking about some warning signs and some symptoms on self-harm because I realized that with all the videos I've made on self-harm and on mental health, I've actually never made a video on this topic. As you will be aware, if you've like been in the mental health kind of field, um, the last DSM that was put out, which was a DSM-5, doesn't actually list self-harm as a mental illness in itself. It kind of lists it as like um, something they're still looking into. Um, and they haven't classed it as a mental health, like as a disorder itself, but it's just like classed as a symptom. And um, generally, you know, when you're a, if you're coming at it from a professional point of view, like if you're a clinician or something, self-harming behaviors are often, you know, coming alongside disorders like borderline personality disorder, which I actually have, or a lot of like trauma disorders and um, things surrounding that nature. But anyone can self-harm. It doesn't have to be associated with those um, disorders. But that is something that if you're like a clinician and stuff, like people would generally like kind of look into. I'm going to be talking today about how you maybe as a friend or a family member or, you know, whoever, how you can kind of maybe see some warning signs um, if you know someone and you feel like they may be doing this. I think I've actually made quite a lot of TikToks on this, and but I've never done YouTube. And I think that's because I just assumed, I think I got confused and I thought because I'd made a billion TikToks. Self-injury is kind of just any behavior that is done on purpose to damage yourself that... Um, has the intention of harming yourself, not in a suicidal way, which I'm going to make this very, very clear. This is not, this is non-suicidal self-injury, which is what they call it in the DSM. And this is not with the intention of killing yourself or, um, you know, it's not a suicide attempt. This is just, you know, people engaging in this behavior to achieve some really strong emotions, you know, um, in response to relationship issues, could be life circumstances, could be trauma. Just the main part of this video is going to be focusing on, you know, what are some signs, what are some symptoms of self-harm. This can actually be very hard to spot. So the first one would be probably the most, like, common because it's, um, I suppose, just like the easiest way for people to hide self-harm would be to, um, you know, like wearing long sleeves and long pants. So this would be really hard to tell if you lived in a climate that's really cold all the time. But if you're, you know, if you're noticing that you have a friend or a family member or, you know, whatever the issue is, or maybe you're a counsellor um, or psychologist, whatever, right, and you have a client, but if this person is constantly wearing long sleeves and long pants and you never see this person ever and you know this person for a really long time and you've never seen them in shorts or a t-shirt or something like that it's like hot now i'm talking about like the weather it's not appropriate for the weather so like inappropriate dressing as in like it is so so hot and this person is constantly wearing a jumper so other things would be like unexplained um scratches bruises um, you know, cuts, wounds, whatever, um, on the person, and maybe, like, you're noticing this quite frequently, maybe they're in weird spots, maybe they're not really, like, they're unexplained, like, if you ask the person, they might give a really, like, you know, like, excuse for it, you know, um, like, oh, it was, like, I mean, People used to joke, like, it was my cat or whatever. But in all honesty, you know, people may be giving very, like, um, vague, that's the word, vague excuses. Maybe you notice that it's, like, it looks very intentional. Wounds that just never heal. So, you know, like, some the person just has continuous marks in the same spot. That's another one. So the person may be just doing it in the same spot, kind of, like, over and over again to try to 
maybe hope that people aren't going to notice it, um, you know, or very confined to one area. You may notice that, like, there's never any medical supplies around, so maybe the band-aids are constantly gone. Like, there's never any band-aids in the house. Maybe there's never any, um, yeah, just, like, medical things. Like, you're wondering where they're going. Like, maybe they're just suddenly disappearing. If there are a few of these things starting to happen, then this could be a sign, like, yeah, medical things just going missing vanishing from places you're like where do they go have kids for instance like if you're a parent i'm just trying to cover like all bases here but like if you're a parent and your kids are spending a lot of time in their room or the bathroom like long periods of time this person is spending a large amount of time on their own socially isolated like they're not kind of spending time with other people um you know because you have to kind of look at this like basically look at it like a drug addiction so you know if people are spending large amounts of time and money and you don't know where their money's going you don't know where they what they're doing all the time like you never see them kind of thing that can start to raise suspicion especially if you know that the person is struggling with some emotional issues and maybe this person is like just looking kind of depressed and like not really socializing not acting how they would normally act or maybe they're not wanting to see anyone because I know a big one is like socially isolating yourself the person has become quite like kind of obsessed with things that are kind of um suicidal in a way so what I mean by this is it's like that common thing that people say like oh you know um warning signs could be people giving all their stuff away and I don't mean in that sense but I'm talking about like maybe this person is listening to really depressing music all the time and I know this is like a really cliched thing but I'm just saying that this may not always be the case but if this like if you see people doing a lot of these things all together then I'm saying that, that could be a sign if you're finding things in the person's room or in their house um you know then that could be like just like shop items in like weird places like um or medical supplies like you know in weird places that the person doesn't ever go like swimming or play any sport because maybe this is getting in the way of them like maybe they used to be in swimming heats or maybe they used to be like dancing and everything and they have withdrawn from that because they're either like you know mentally too unwell like they're too depressed or they've lost interest or it could also be because of physical injuries that are like getting in the way of them actually doing these things so they may stop you know swimming they may stop playing sports because they can't wear the uniform maybe um yeah the person is always making an excuse as to why they can't do it thing could be people wearing like brace like lots of bracelets and just like things on their arms all the time again yeah this could just be like a fashion statement but if this person just wears them all the time like they never take it off and I think the thing with this with all the stuff that I mentioned is that this is hard to pick up on because you have to take notice of these things and if you're not really looking for this you're not going to notice it you know, like these aren't things that maybe you would ever actually think about but if you suddenly just start noticing these things and I suppose the biggest thing is the change what you need to look for would be change in their behavior like emotionally how this how's this person going in general like how is their how is their emotional well-being uh, if they're a school student uni student how's it studying going is this person sleeping like are they sleeping too much are they not sleeping at all are they on social media posting um you know social media is like so common now so like are they on social media posting really depressing stuff? Those are like the main things I would say, but obviously the biggest thing would be change in behavior, change in eating, change in their sleeping, studying habits, social life, you know, looking at all of those things. And if you don't live with the person or if you don't see them very regularly, it's not going to be easy to pick up on. It's not going to be something that you may have picked up on. But when it comes to, you know, I suppose that's kind of like collecting evidence once you kind of looked at all those things, if you really feel like, oh, I think this person is doing this or whatever, I would say it's best just to ask the person out very straight. I only say this because I think sometimes, like, 
that will give the person the opportunity to just say yes or no. And even if they are doing it and they say no, that just means that that's their personal choice. They just don't want to like go into it. But I think it just makes it a bit easier than having to like, you know, beat around the bush about it. I just feel like with this, it's like really, it's really good just to be like quiet, just like, you know, um, like explain maybe that you've noticed like, oh, I just noticed that like you stopped coming to, you know, this, this and this. And that maybe like you never come to school anymore. Or, like you're always late. Or I've noticed that you're always, you know, um, dressing in this particular way or whatever it is, right? Whatever things that you've noticed about the person that seems out of the ordinary. And then I would say to bring it up and literally just ask them like straight out. Like, oh, I was just wondering, like, um, are you engaging in self-harm behaviors or whatever? And then like, like I said, the person can just say yes or no. Even if they say like no and you still think they are, like I would say to leave it, don't don't push it anymore because I don't really think personally just for me I don't really think that it would be very nice if I have experienced stuff where people have really pushed out that when I wasn't ready to talk about it and like it can be quite invasive so you need to look at the person individually if you want me to film any other videos um relating to this topic then please comment down below my TikTok has a lot of short videos talking about a lot of these issues and very practical videos on what to say, what not to say, and like how you can help people in different situations or how you can, how you can help yourself. I just realized I never filmed a ending to the video that I was filming about um, how to tell someone is self-harming. So this is going to be the end. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please subscribe if you want more videos similar to this or if you have any video suggestions or ideas check out my social media my instagram and my tiktok has a lot of mental health content as well as a playlist linked on my channel for different mental health topics hope you're all well and staying safe and i'll see you in my next video bye